All right, so, so far the kinds of filters and uh, pixel transformations we've made only deal with single pixels at a time. We're seeing them as a singular unit. But of course, an image like this it really isn't, you know, one point doesn't really tell us that much information. When we see it, we see it as this whole and these changes across the image. Um, and there's a type of filter called kernel filters that look at the neighbors of each pixel to help make decisions on what it can do. And kernel filters are really cool because they allow us to do um, more complex stuff like sharpening or blurring or edge detection inside of an image. Um, so uh, I think what makes more sense is not for us to build this whole thing together because there's a lot of like nested for loops and stuff. So it's a lot of you watching me just like type out for loops. So instead I have it open over here and we can kind of take a look at this together and see how this works. Um, but I would encourage you to dig into the code because it'll explain um, in more detail kind of all these steps. Um, so a kernel at its core is uh, a set of weights. So if we have here, I have a blur kernel, a filter and an edge uh, detection one. And you can think about the center value as being the, the pixel itself. And then um, the values around it are its immediate neighbors. So this would be the pixel directly above it, to the right, to the upper right, et cetera, all the way around. And what we can do then is get the values from each of those pixels and then um, use these weights to transform them, put them back together, and then decide a new value for our current pixel. Now that's all kind of weird and abstract. Let's take a look. Um, but you can see here, for example, you know, Blur has um, kind of a bigger number in the middle and then the smaller weights around it. Sharpen has these negative numbers. Edge detection has negative numbers, um, but slightly different. Um, okay, so I've loaded my image and then I can try processing it using um, these different filters. And I've just made a function called kernel filter and then I can send in um, the, the image and then the kernel that I wanted to use that I've defined ahead of time. Um, actually, let's take a look at these first before we um, go ahead and see how they work. So I'm just going to comment this out. So this is sharpen. It's kind of the opposite of blur. And then um, the edge detection filter on its own is pretty sweet, but um, really commonly we're going to pair it with converting the image to grayscale first um, so that we don't have all this like weird color. And if you want to, then you can invert afterwards and you get something that looks kind of like a line drawing, which is pretty sweet. So again, here you can see how we chain together. These ideas are going to make a big difference in um, kind of the results that we get. And there's times when it makes sense to roll your own filter and other times when maybe it's just easier and quicker to use the built-in filters. Okay, let's go back to blur, turn this back on. And then our draw is simple. It's just, you know, drawing the, the resulting image. Okay, so here's our code. And um, this gets a little funky. The first thing I'm doing is creating an output image. Um, this again, it's like some of the other examples. It's a blank image that we can work with. Um, because we need to be able to access all the neighboring pixels, um, we really need to have this blank image. Otherwise we're gonna be making changes and then accessing those changes and our image won't look the way we want it to. We load their pixels and then we walk through the image. Now you'll notice one big difference here is I'm starting at one and I'm ending at one less than the height. And the reason for that is that um, if you remember our kernel up at the top here, um, I need to be able to access an image to the left of the current pixel and above the current pixel. So if I start at zero, it's going to try to access the pixel off the edge of the image. Same thing when I get over you know, to the left side or to the bottom, and that's going to cause problems. So in the, the way around this is to just start at the first pixel and end one pixel early. Um, then basically what I'm going to be doing is computing sums. I'm going to add up these values for red, green, and blue for each pixel. And then there's a for loop inside of here. And this is where I get the little brain bendery. We've got a, a for loop for Y, for loop for X. And then um, basically what this does is it lets us look at our neighbors. So it starts at negative one, which is one pixel to the left, um, or sorry, negative one for the Y, which is one pixel up, negative one in the X, which is to the left. And it'll go kind of grab all of those. We compute the index. Um, this is the same y times width plus x times four formula, but instead here we also add the offset values so that we're grabbing 
pixels around our, our uh, pixel, the current pixel. And then um, we use the same offset value to grab the value from our kernel and multiply that by the red, green, and the blue values. Now it's offset plus one because our offset is negative one to one over here um, because we want to be able to go up, left, right, and down. Um, but our kernel, we it's an index, so it's just between zero and um, two. Anyway, we do this for all of the neighbors and we get these sum values. Then uh, we just constrain those back to zero to 255 and we put it in, um, in that position back into our image. Um, now, I mean, that's there's a lot of steps there, but the idea is pretty simple. Basically for every pixel, we just look at all the neighbors, do some math to it and put the result back in place. Um, and you can get some really varied and cool results. So blur here again, um, is this kernel here sharpen? Is this one and edge detection is this one? You can try changing these um, and just see what happens. So for example, let's, do the sharpen filter, which normally looks like this. But let's just see if I make this one, well, we don't get anything. Two, pretty dark. Um, so you can experiment with these things for sure. There's definitely like kind of a narrow range in which they work the way you expect them to. Um, and I've pulled these, I think from a Wikipedia article about this, but this is definitely something you can, again, kind of like some of our other examples, abuse this and see what happens. Like maybe you get some really cool results um, that you weren't kind of expecting. Um, I didn't really pull up any specific tweaks that we can make, but um, these are fun. And these also can be cool as like part of a chain of filters that you apply um, to stuff. So kernel filters, it's not just limited either to this kind of thing. Um, you could just do averaging, you could look at neighbors and do like um, thresholding based on that in some kind of way. So you can imagine, again, like ways of taking this idea and abusing it to make something cool um, that just uses this idea of like neighboring pixels.